show, Tom Trento, on uh, Monday. Monday in Florida, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Trento here at uh, five minutes, five minutes after 4 p.m. in the afternoon, East Coast time, WSBR. W Sunny Boca Raton, 740 on your dial. That's on the AM side. Uh, what we what we want is everyone to download the the application iHeartRadio on any of your smartphones. Cue it up, WSBR 740 Boca Raton, and you can listen to us anywhere on the planet that you can get an internet signal. Very cool stuff. If you want to watch the show or listen, also go to theunitedwest.org. Four o'clock every day, we are putting the television component of our show on. We actually produce a television show daily, and the audio only plays on the radio because up until now, can't figure out how to have sight on a radio. So you got to actually look at your computer or your iPhone. Another phenomenal week of guests. We have Jay Sekulow, the uh, uh, constitutional attorney, on Wednesday. Um, we have some folks from Center for Security Policy tomorrow on the Muslim Brotherhood's involvement with Hamas during Operation Protective Edge. We're, we have uh, 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 Igozi coming back uh, on Wednesday or Thursday of this week for another insight into what's going on in Israel. We're going to look at a, a film, Silent Conquest, a little bit later in the week. Great stuff. All things pro-Constitution, pro-the United States, defend Israel, defeat Islamic Jihad, defeat President Obama. That's where we're at, folks. We bring you hardcore information, but in a kind of um, edutainment. We make jihad fun. Yeah, we make jihad fun. I mean, look, this is serious stuff. People die. That's why we commit our lives to helping people live but uh, if we can make you smile a little bit, or, or even better, make the bad guys smile because it kills them. <laughs> kills them. Do we do smile. not like the humor so like much. No, 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 I know. No, no, you don't. If we can do that, then we've accomplished what we've... Was that said. Imam Abdullah? Did he just walk in again? I think he's back. I am here. How was your weekend, sir? <laughs> Most fantastic. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, you know, I, I was you here... spit uh, on a Jew somewhere. <laughs> oh, no, no, that is silly. Um, you know, I come here, I saw you right after the Juma Press on Friday, and yes. I see you, and I uh, spend the rest of the weekend uh, gorging myself like an uh, animal and uh, cursing Jews, yes. Oh, yes, see, it comes down to that. You really? How was your weekend, Mark? Oh, good. We did a new video, and uh, we pushed it out. Uh, did, did a little uh, five-and-a-half-minute video, which has taken off. It's it's really screaming. The, uh, made it on to uh, Breitbart, main story up there, and it's going across the country like gangbusters. Breitbart TV. What's the name of the video? Was it FBI, FBI warning? FBI warning, yeah. Um, care... Organized by Hamas. Organized FBI by Hamas. Right. Mark, may the fleas of a thousand camels sleep in your bed. Well, you know what's true. You said it last Friday that we know it is true. You just don't like the whole... Correct. Enemies, Enemies of the state. state. You can see it right behind right, me. Right, That's right, what right, we're right. dealing with. Yeah. And um, uh, our series is uh, we, we go after bad guys, government lies, or Muslim spies, and uh, past uh, two shows, we've been doing an investigative report into the terrorist organization CARE, Council on American Islamic Relations, um, and uh, their, its leader, Nihad Awad, its current leader, Nihad mm -hmm. Awad. And we're essentially saying that this is a front group for, uh, for the Hamas. Um, and because it's a front group okay. for the Hamas, sometimes the, uh, the album cover of Rush slips its way in. Well, but I have no idea why. We, that is see, that. we're being infiltrated yeah, for you radio okay. folks. There we are. The we're back to the Brotherhood. <laughs> um, we, our guys, uh, something any, hit, some button hit did, somewhere. I did, don't know what the heck Did either of there. you guys have <laughs> any um, adult beverages over the weekend? No, actually yes. not. I'm working. Okay, no, all right. Well, we got that little thing sorted out. Tom Trento here at uh, uh, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 11 minutes after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Part three today of um, Enemies of the State Cares, a uh, terrorist organization. Again, we mean that in the full-throated sense of the word. They 
have been founded by a terrorist organization, the Hamas. They're a front group for a terrorist organization, the Hamas. And uh, they have a veneer, or as they like to say, a, they, they've downplayed their Islamic hue to be more acceptable to the Western dumb mind, except for us, because we see through these hues. We can see through the hues. So we're providing more information. Why? People want to know, Tom, you guys are doing a story that was, uh, you know, 2008, this trial, Holy Land trial was. Why are you dragging up all that stuff? That's old news. Yes, why? <laughs> why? Yeah, why are we doing I do that? not like, but tell us. Uh, Ab Abdullah, Mark, does not like us uh, Telling the dragging truth. up <clears throat> a federal trial where the Holy Land Foundation folks were, uh, were found guilty of some pretty serious crimes or in jail. We may show you some family members today in a talkie. But look, uh, this is not new for us. We have been, long before 2008, long before the largest terrorism financing trial in the United States was uh, initiated in 2007. We've been dealing with these issues. We've been calling out the Muslim Brotherhood, CARE, these other uh, affiliate groups. Um, one of the reasons why we're doing it now is because, well, the immediate... The catalyst was that uh, CARE, the group in question, headed up by Nihad Awad, went after two American heroes trying to censor them yes. and to cause uh, legitimate military contractors to distance themselves from Frank Gaffney in particular, Center for Security Policy. Gaffney got, um, I think it was $85,000 out of an almost $4 million budget by from some military contractors who bought tables at various events he had, a little different than writing checks. Nonetheless, money that went, went into uh, Gaffney's uh, coffers, according to CARE. And um, CARE was saying to the military contractors that a national security think tank ought not be receiving money from military contractors because Frank Gaffney calls out Muslims who are terrorists as being terrorists. So that engaged us to say, let's set the, the facts straight here. Then another press release that CARE sent out a, a week or two ago was against uh, General Jerry Boinkin, ordained Christian minister who was going to speak in, um, in Vancouver, Washington, not Vancouver, British Columbia, Vancouver, Washington. And uh, CARE said that uh, the organizers should distance themselves uh, and disinvite um, Boinkin. Conversely, Boykin went, the, the spineless mayor, Timothy uh, Levitt, Levitt he, um, he backed out of the event he was hosting, ought to be ashamed of himself, and, um, uh, and Roger Button, I believe his name was, the chaplain for the YMCA out there, he also uh, quit the committee in protest of Boykin. Boykin, ironically, gentlemen, called us as we were reporting live on the air and said, as a result of the controversy, the hall was sold out, and there was no controversy because General Boynton gave his personal Christian testimony. Kufar. Integrated into 36 years serving this country in a distinguished way. A former to, to commander of Delta Force. For original founder, founder. One of the founding members of Delta Force, then commanded Delta Force, was, was commanding at Black Hawk Down, Mogadishu, 1993, Took two 50 caliber rounds, 50 caliber rounds. I know that's right. uh, hard to believe. Uh, in uh, I think it was the Panama um, uh, attack, and uh, lived for that. So Roger Button once again, and Timothy Levitt, you spineless worms, pieces of uh, I don't know what worm, worm dude. Yeah, I would I'm, I would like I'm to controlling myself. I would here. like to be his PR person, having to formulate how the speech goes. Care pressured them to say. Oh, you know, you need to uh, find someone who's more tolerant, more tolerant. Okay. Explain to me how a mayor uh, in the United States has to explain to his voting constituency that, yes, I bow down to a terrorist group over an American hero. I do not. I would have to quit. I couldn't work for that guy if I had to formulate right. the response to it explaining is, the, the actions. It is uh, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Just a little different view of uh, a reality than we do. I know. Uh, in, in a sane world, 
It's disgusting, despicable, and... Uh, inexcusable. In, inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable. And also in any- another reason that we're going after care now it has something little to do with that Israel-Gaza war. <laughs> And, oh, uh, that thing. That yeah. thing, because the money that CARE is raising in the United States is directly going to support Hamas. That's because CARE rockets. is Hamas. CARE is Hamas. They were founded by Hamas. They were founded by a specially de- designated global terrorist, Musa Abu Marzouk. And, it's, uh, and also, this Holy Land Foundation trial. 2007-2008 really, really laid out the absolute damning evidence yeah. that CARE is funded, supplied, and designed by Hamas. And all the information has been out there in bits and pieces all over the place. A few people have put it together. Uh, Frank Gaffney has put it together. He's got a 10-part series. Yeah, Steve, Steve Emerson's Emerson done amazing work. Done amazing work, and a bunch of other people. And it really hasn't been... You know, all really, really. It hasn't gotten our spin, spin on it, right? and our fancy, dancy, whizzle, dizzle, razzle, dazzle video work. And, and what I'm uh, seeing from people who watch the video that commentary. that we did last night already it goes, "Wow, I did not." In fact, my wife, who's who should know this stuff inside and out, and going, "I did not know half that stuff that you had in that video," and it just blew me away. He goes, "That it was actually founded by a specially designated global terrorist." I go, "Yeah." Well, I think there's also peaked interest in the whole uh, Muslim mafia thing, so to speak, after the uh, two reporters got their heads cut off and everyone started worrying about ISIS. And now people are finally concerned. Yes. 20 years after the forming of the terrorist organization. Yeah. So there's three reasons that we, we just laid out why we are dealing with care at this point. And understand, audience. Our national security work, uh, standing with Israel, standing with the United States, cares an enemy of the state. We've been on this for a long time. We're bringing it back out in a public fashion, in this unique fashion, on the radio, on our, our TV show. Uh, they went after American heroes. So when you have Muslim terrorists going after American heroes, you, you spool up on it. We were very involved in Operation Protective Edge. This is a continuation because CARE is raising more money now, and they're trying to petition the government to send your money over to rebuild Gaza. $212 million pledged by this government thus far. How how bizarre is that? And And the fact that that the Islamic State, which we have established beyond doubt, is... Islamic. And is a a state. state. Uh, Wait a second. The president says it's an un-Islamic non-state. Are you disagreeing with our president? Um, respectfully, uh, disrespectfully, yes, I have to disagree with our president on that. He's factually wrong. Uh, but when when the Islamic State starts chopping heads off of uh, journalists and, and uh, innocent people, uh, it's it's one thing to chop a head off of someone who's been adjudicated to be guilty. In the context of uh, legitimate due process, when you wield the sword to through jihad to extend Islam. That kind of wakes people up in the United States, and we are tying CARE to that. But wait a minute. CARE distanced themselves in a press conference with 120 other people and came out and says, we deplore the Islamic State. It's neither Islamic nor a state. How do you answer that? Um, Very easily is that CARE is in competition with ISIS now because they tried to come out and say, the only way you can have a caliphate is by a consensus of Islamic people. <clears throat> that is which, so funny. <laughs> which there is, is never, never a consensus among us. It's always the strongest will survive in Islam, the strongest will rule. Strong horse, weak horse. Absolutely. Might Strong makes horse, right. Horse. So they are coming out against ISIS because they're starting to become the weak horse and they don't like that and they're losing their political influence and it's bringing up this thing of, oh my God, Islam might actually be you know, doing something that's anti-American like Bill Maher said the other day. Bill Maher's now on our side. It's also geographical and that the CARE is part of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood and they want to be the center of the caliphate and ISIS is not there. They're well, in Syria, Iraq, and on the border of Turkey, and they would like that to be the center of the new so caliphate. So what we have... Strong we, horse, weak horse. Well, we've been carrying 
this series through at 22 minutes after 4 o'clock. Tom Trento, your host, with, uh, with Damon, with Mark. We have Abdullah here. We got to recognize Yes, I'm always okay, here. Okay, with Abdullah here, with Mike, with a few other guys here. Don't um, forget me. Schmucky. <laughs> I got a question for you later on, Schmuck. Uh, we're going to bring. We're going to do a little quick thing on Debbie Wasserman and Schultz yes. shortly, and then I got a question for you. But it's very important to understand that we've been using the uh, the metaphor of the La Cosa Nostra, the Sicilian organized crime gang that uh, ravaged the United States and and still is out there. We've been making comparisons, and in fact, we said we got some information that these leaders, Abu Marzuk and and Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmed, they kind of like the romance of the Godfather movies and the Sopranos. They, they kind of see themselves in, the, in those molds. Well, the we've Allah been, Father. We've been using that as, uh, as a, a metaphor for similarities in the organization, the mentality. We've made a distinction, though. The La Cosa Nostra in the United States, these guys loved America. They really loved this country. <laughs> you know? Conversely... True. Care and all the Muslim Brotherhood guys hate this country and want to destroy it through Sharia law. All the mafia wanted to do was make a little money and make it bigger and better. The country. Hey, what's you know? the problem with that? Hey, hey I know. Hey, you know? It's a capitalist society. But what we do have in uh, in in the Islamic world, we have families battling each other like we had historic mafioso families right. battling each other. We got the Care family Perfect analogy. coming out in a press conference against the Islamic State family. Both of them are Sunni Muslims, Muslim Brotherhood entities, Al-Qaeda lovers, Hamas lovers, and they're fighting, and they're fighting over those points you raised, but also methodology. Right. Care wants to follow the Brotherhood's political domination, cultural jihad, stealth jihad approach. Right. The Islamic State is saying, screw that, man. I want to chop you your head off today. <laughs> how, many, how many people did you sign up today, Nihad Awad? We signed up about 4,000 who are flying in from around the world joining the Islamic State. How many people you got today, 2, Omar 000, Ahmed? 2,000. Yeah. 2,000. You know? That's it. No, but yeah, 2,000 in the whole care operation. It's a very small operation. Right. But well-funded. Well-funded, that's for sure. We'll get into that. But before we get into our analysis uh, in our third part, and we're going to continue this. Every uh, day from now until ever, if I know you, Kufar. <laughs> as long as care is operating, we're going to provide material to make it a little more difficult for their, them to operate with impunity here in the United States of America. I wonder if okay. you're going to get another letter, Tom. The, the who? I wonder if you're going to get another email from Nisa. Oh, from those guys? The from Nisa. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, look, we, we, anticipate, we anticipate them sending us a letter from their lawyers and all of that stuff. Uh, that's all part of the game. And we understand that. And, you know, go ahead. You have our permission to send us a letter to tell us to stop uh, saying uh, these things about you. It's okay, guys. You can, you can send us the letter. It's okay. All right, let's do this. A couple of items here at 25 minutes after 4 o'clock on the East Coast. Where is the time going to? It flies by. We tried to fit 15 pounds of camel poop in a five-pound bag every day. Every time, and it's all over the place here. Well, uh, let's go to Houston for a second. We have an interesting development down there. Um, some of my homies, my evangelical homies, are in a battle with uh, Anise Parker, the mayor of Houston, Texas. Okay. Now, uh, it's no surprise that Anise doesn't look like Nihad Awad at all. But are, it's, it's no are you surprise. Sure? Are you sure? We yes. a picture of her. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody uh, dressed her up. Uh, Anise uh, Parker is the mayor of Houston, and she is in a legal battle with, uh, with some of the evangelical pastors of Houston regarding the homosexual issue. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Anise is a uh, dyed-in-the-wool, declared, out-of-the-closet lesbian, correct? Oh, she's one of my people. Yes, yes, BJ, how are you? <laughs> um, and in, in, in discovery in a lawsuit, she has uh, filed papers to say that the, the various pastors have to present their sermons, then she changed it to their speeches. So there's a battle going on down there. Uh, very interesting for us because this is one of the cultural issues and we defend the Constitution. Our primary work is in national security. But there is a very interesting national security component here. Anise Parker is mobbed up, folks. 
with the Islamic world. She's mobbed up with uh, Fethullah Gulen, which is a, uh, a Turkish leader, and the Gulen movement is a uh, Sunni Turkish movement that is pouring tons of money into starting these uh, Islamic schools, Islamic Hugh schools. Hundreds of them. All over the United States. And the Gulen entity in Turkey has been whining and dining politicians, very good politicians, not just lefto lunos like Anise Parker, but many Republican conservatives who got caught up in this, taking them on these junkets to Turkey, showing them how wonderful Islam is in Turkey, then bringing them back and gaining votes to put these uh, charter schools, which are very bad for American culture and kids, into operation. We are going to pursue this in the days ahead. We, actually, into- already did, we actually did one after the Futala Gulan, Gulin, whatever you want to call it. Is uh, we we about three years ago, if you recall, we will, we went after them and showed how all their schools and they're totally a mobbed up Turkey organization, coming at it almost in the same exact angle as Care does, yep. but even nicer mm-hmm. by saying by trying to do this very covertly but in Ver- texas it's as really they weird. abuse the h1b visa, visa program, program. Yeah. to bring in uh astronomical yes, amounts so of- we got two problems we got two problems we got the fathula gulin that movement in the united states which we've spooled up on and we will do more but more importantly for our purpose today we have a mayor of a significant city in houston who's not only mobbed up with them She's leading and hosting iftar dinners and all this other stuff with many of the care-type people in Houston. So we're going to snoop around down there a little bit and and bring that story to you. So that's uh, developing down the road. We also have um, uh, some interesting developments with President Obama. We go after whenever Obama makes a mistake, which is... um, Hourly, basically. Remember Solyndra? Remember the whole Solyndra debacle? Where um, Oh, the solar panel thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the president and Biden in particular wanted to, to get behind, after they got mm-hmm. elected in 2008, they wanted to get behind uh, the Green Movement. And uh, many of the uh, donors to the Obama campaign were investors in, uh, in Solyndra. So they got the Obama administration to loan a couple of bucks to Solyndra as sort of a joint venture a uh, quasi-government, quasi-private entity so they can go do an IPO, Solyndra, and make everybody a ton of money. Remember that whole thing? Sure. Yeah, how'd that work out? Um, remember how much what was it? What was the taxpayer f- money was loaned to Solyndra? No, how much was it? It was a, it was a little bit, about 500 bucks, I think. Or, or no, 5,000. Five, no, 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 no. Tom, I think that was... Oh, I'm sorry, five. 50 million. Oh, I'm sorry, $500 million. A half a billion dollars. A half a billion dollars loaned after Price Waterhouse had returned an evaluation regarding the, I, the, uh, the imminent IPO saying, you're out of your mind loaning any money to this company. We have federal laws in place to block that sort of, to block that sort of activity. The, uh, the Obama administration pulled Joe Biden's chief of staff, a guy by the name of Ron Klain, Pulled him in. He's an operator. He's a lobbyist. He's a fixer. Carrying the uh, mafiosa uh, motif. There he is, Ron Klain. He's a fixer. When something goes bad, you bring this guy in. He's got lobby. He's got lawyer background uh, connections. They bring him in to get this money loaned in a unique way so that if something went wrong, after Price Waterhouse said something's going to go wrong, the investors can get their money back before... Taxpayers did. If it tanks, if it goes belly up, well, it did go belly up, as we all right. know. It's a major debacle. And Andy McCarthy, in a phenomenal article today, said that uh, federal laws were violated. But the fixer to the whole thing was Ron Klain, this gentleman that uh, is tight with the Obama administration. So why are we talking about him? So Linda's well, old. When you've got yeah. a serious problem, when you got something that is a matter a of life problem. and death. A serious PR problem. Yeah, when you got something that's a matter of life and death, when you've got to handle the PR, when you've got to handle very complicated, complex issues, like, um, I don't know, the Ebola situation is pretty serious. 
Right. Again, you, you, potential you, pandemic. You need to have a highly qualified person, doctor, someone with the CDC come up and an take epidemiologist, charge. something, Somebody something knows like something that. about what's going on. A guy with a guy with PhD. I mean, I, I went so, the top of before the top. his name. Yeah, I went so, the top of the top on that one. So the best person in the world is Ron Klain. What? Hold on. Ron Klain. <laughs> who was the fixer for Solyndra to be hired as the czar, Obama czar. This guy is Obama czar to handle the, the, potent, the Obama crisis, potential pandemic or uh, epidemic here in the United States. The Can anybody crisis. explain that to me? I thought you said he was a lawyer and lobbyist. I don't know if he's a lawyer. He's a lobbyist. Okay, I thought you said he was a lobbyist. No, he's a lobbyist. He's a lobbyist. But then you said that he's the new Obama czar, or o- Ebola czar. You know, Make up your the, mind, Trento. I think he's the Obola czar is what he is. He's the czar for Obola, a disease that can be more devastating, it looks like, than Ebola. You know, this is very typical, Tom. Truth this, be told, folks. This is very typical. This is every. This is how Obama handles stuff. He doesn't solve the problem. He solves the political problem that makes Perfect. it look like he a He solves problem. the fallout. You... you as we do here, when we approach these difficult uh, national security issues, we do a lot of analysis. Then we red team it. We say, okay, you know, what's the other side going to say? They got to play in this. What is the the downside? What are the negatives? We really do a lot of a lot of work to, w- behind what we do, um, and we identify the problem for what it is. Look, this is a problem with us. We got to deal with this problem here. Every problem for Obama, because he's a political animal, is a political problem. So Ebola is not a medical problem, not an epidemiology problem, not a disease problem. It's a friggin' political problem because of what? What's in 16 days? An election. Oh, there an, might election. Be an election. Oh, you mean the election <laughs> that the Obamacare rates will uh, come out after? Oh, that, that election. That election? Where the, the Democrats in the Senate are in trouble, and this is only hurting the Democrats, bring in a political fixer. I guarantee you, Ron Klain, you will start seeing tremendous success for, for Ebola. suppressing Ebola, just like Solyndra. He's going to replay. Look, if you if you guys were him and you had a success downplaying a debacle to, before the election, wouldn't you pull the same game plan out? The no. Same expert. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. What I would actually get? get someone who who knew something yeah, about well, you're uh, living in a diseases. I wouldn't I wouldn't hire a lobbyist to not. to be the Ebola czar. You're living in a different universe uh, because this administration is driven by the body politic. That's all. And 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 they're not only are they ideologues, but right now in the White House, the Valerie Jarrett's of the world uh, are are uh, the Josh Ernests. They are saying, oh, God, we're screwed. We've got two and a half years left of Obama. Uh, he's going to be tanking more and more and more. We have, we're 50 years old. we got 20 good years of life. I want a high-paying board of directors job. So uh, we got to clean this mess up. And you watch after this election, the rats start leaving the deck of the USS sinking Obama. Speaking of sinking Obama stuff, we had an interesting development with our own lady, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Debbie. Debbie, who's a congresswoman from the Fort Lauderdale Congressional District running against Joe Kaufman. She was on Fox News with Chris Wallace over the weekend. Right now, it's Monday, 20th of September at 40, uh, 36 minutes, 36 minutes after 4 o'clock. Tom Trento, your host, WSBR AM Radio 740 on the dial. Debbie Wasserman uh, was in a, uh, a panel or debate with uh, Rice Priebus, the head of the Republican National Committee. Debbie Wasserman Schultz is the head of the Democrat National Committee. And, um, and Rice made this very uh, devastating claim against Debbie. And listen to this. Back. And so I don't know whose back these Democrats have, but it's not the American people's let me, back. Let me, let me. All right, what, what Debbie said, um, if we have that volume again, because that was pretty, pretty devastating. I'll set it up and if we can play it a little louder. Yeah. Debbie's, um, Chris Wallace is interviewing uh, Rice Priebus, the head of the Republican National Committee. And, and those are, the, those are the, the, the people responsible for 
working with the states to turn out Republicans on the Republican side. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, we had Peter Feynman on as a guest. He's the Republican National Committee man from the state of Florida. He liaises with Rice Priebus on a regular basis. He's uh, uh, one of the two from Florida. On the Democrat side, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz heads up the Democrat National Committee. She's responsible for turning the Democrat vote out nationwide, particularly in the state of Florida, particularly in her district. And Rice Priebus just nailed her and, and, uh, <coughs> and said this about President Obama. Now worried they might lose. Debbie, you guys are losing everywhere, first of all. And the president <laughs> hasn't had anybody's back. He hasn't even had your back. And so I don't know whose back these Democrats have, but it's not the American people's let me, back. Let me, let me. Now, that was, um, uh, that allusion to the president doesn't have anybody's back means what in context? He's in it for Obama. There's only one person Obama cares about, and that's Obama. There's no loyalty or anything like that. All right, and when, when Rice Priebus said... He doesn't even have your back. He was referring to an article in, uh, in the report Politico back a month ago, two months ago, September, where the article relegated Wasserman Schultz to the role, I'm reading now, of a rope hanger groupie, a sad, embarrassing spectacle of a woman who pestered President Obama, wanted the party to pick up the tab for her outfits, and abused the job by hitting up donors for contributions to their own campaign, while she was supposed to be shilling for the National Repo uh, Democrat Party. And, and uh, this article comes to us through BizPAC Review. She's Great a goddess. So um, that's, that's the, the view that uh, the Republicans have nationwide of, and the Democrats have, of Debbie Wasserman Schultz. But do we have a Republican, possibly one that's running against her right now with us today? I think, I think we, we do. Have. Who do we have? We have Republican nominee for the 23rd District running against Debbie Wasserman <laughs> Schultz, Joe Kaufman. Joe, how are you? Thank Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tom, Dan, Mark. Great doing? to be here. Uh, we know, Joe, you're at, a, uh, at an event, and we thank you for coming on live on WSBR 40 minutes after 4 on Monday, October 20th. Um, uh, did you get a chance to, to catch the, uh, the Fox uh, situation with Rice Priebus and Debbie? No, I, 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 know, I know about what happened, but I, I was uh, busy actually uh, putting out signs for, for today. I'm at a poll, I'm one of the polling places here in Pembroke Pines, Florida. And uh, talking to all the voters going to vote in early voting. Today's their first day of early voting. The first day of early voting in Florida. <laughs> Tremendous. L'chaim, uh, Joseph. L'chaim. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, basically, uh, the, the comment was that Debbie Wasserman Schultz is, uh, is a dinosaur in the, in the Democrat Party and is yeah. going to be cast aside at some point. What, what's going on? Tell us about your race and, and your view of the Democrats' view of Debbie. Well, you know, you've read the Politico article that had come out a short time ago talking, and you mentioned it, where, where, uh, where it talks about how she cared so much about her, her paying for her, her wardrobe. Her, uh, you know, she, wants to, the, she was begging the Democrats to, to uh, pay for her, her hairstyling and, and, uh, and dry cleaning oh, instead of worrying job. about things like like including uh, Jerusalem and the and God in the platform, because that's the time when she was doing this. Remember, right. you remember that whole hubbub that was going on in the um, in the in the Democrat convention when they left those things out. And where was she when all of that was going on? Well, she was begging all of these different uh, different Democrat organizations, the DNC and even the White House, to pay for her her wardrobe. So I guess you know. Uh, you know, um, I question like, where's her loyalty? Where's her? Is her loyalty for the United States? Is her loyalty for her, for even for her party, or or did she really care about what was going into her party platform, or did she was she just self-serving? Did she just care about what was going on in her her own life? Is that a trick and, uh, question? Is that a trick question? <laughs> hey, Joe, uh, we, we're we're pretty familiar with the demographics of the twenty third district. It's a, a highly Jewish. Democrat district and Debbie Wasserman Schultz 
you know, is, is proud of her, her Jewish heritage and, and pushes that during election time. I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you happen to be Jewish too. What goes on when you, a nice Jewish boy, talks to, you know, the, the prototypical Jewish voter who's had a hard time voting anything but D, now they see something new. A guy who understands the issues, a guy who you know, bleeds for America and Israel. What goes through their heads when you talk to them, these people that just can't do anything other than vote Democratic? Well, if you talk about the Jewish community, at least the community that cares about Jewish issues, and, and one major issue which all of you know about all too well is, is Israel. How are you? And, and, uh, and my wife and I, when we go to, to pro-Israel uh, gatherings, especially when, when, uh, uh, when the war in Gaza was, was going on, um, we had all of these Democrats approach us telling us that they were, that they were voting for, uh, for me against Debbie. And the reason was because they understood that Debbie wasn't with Israel. Um, she wasn't with her people. Um, she, was, she was with herself. She was with Barack Obama. She, she voted. Um, everything that she voted for, how are you, was, was, uh, was, dealing, was dealing with things that President Obama wanted. So when President Obama was, uh, wanted the Muslim Brotherhood to take over Egypt, she volunteered and said that she was all in favor of getting rid of Mubarak. When, when uh, President Obama had his war against Muammar Gaddafi, which of course you all know led to, led to Benghazi, led to Al-Qaeda taking over that area today, led to all the chaos that's going on in, in Libya. She was all in favor of it. When President Obama said he wanted Israel to go back to 1967 borders, which are indefensible, I call them suicide borders, um, and Netanyahu came to the country and, and, and told the entire public that, that, uh, that it was suicide for Israel. Well, she was entirely in favor of it. Wow. Everything regarding the Middle East, regarding Israel, um, when, it, when it comes to President Obama, what he wants, she wants. And it's leaked out to the Jewish community, at least the part of the community that cares about Israel. And they all know that she's with him and not, uh, not with her, her people. And, uh, and so that's the, that's the Jewish vote, whether it's Democrat or Republican or anything in between, um, that I'm going to, that I'm absolutely going to get. Uh, now, there's others that care about things like, you know, Obamacare and, and, uh, and, and the fact that she voted against the expansion of charter schools and, and, um, and a lot of different local issues uh, that they'll be voting Republican. But, but, uh, but when it comes to specifically Jewish is, uh, issues or Israel-related issues, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of people in the community that, that have her number now, and they, and they know exactly what she's, what she's about, and they know that she's not on their side. And so they are now on my side. Well, that's, that's a fascinating insight into some of the uh, demographic um, uh, developments in, in your area. We know your, your national security, your pro-Israel, all of that, but we also know you have an economic platform, you have a, a domestic platform, an education platform. So uh, we'll check back with you uh, every once in a while to see how you're doing. And um, you know, uh, First day of voting up. today. First. first day of voting in Florida, get out there and vote. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, if you can vote today, then you can vote on November 4th, right? Is that how it works? Only if you're a Democrat. <laughs> okay. it, all, all, only, only if you're dead. <laughs> only if you're dead. <laughs> all right, Joe, thank you very much. We know you're busy uh, polling, shaking hands, and uh, uh, you take care. Godspeed, Joe Kaufman, folks. Thank you. God bless you guys. All right, thank thanks you. a lot. The Republican well. candidate, 23rd District, running against um, Debbie. It's going to be a tough battle for Joe, uh, because he makes too much sense for a lot of the voters right. in, that, in that district. Uh, oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, 45 minutes. That would be a four. shocking headline. DNC chairwoman is beaten oh, in, yeah. in Florida 23. Man, yeah, that, 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 would, that would be, be uh, you know, stranger earth things shattering have happened. is what it would be. Stranger things have happened. Um, and our experience has been that... Uh, that many American Jewish people uh, do not vote for the, uh, the, the, uh, the issues of Israel from a national security perspective. They, they vote primarily for what they perceive as their pocketbook here. But Schmucky, uh, he, he, I think he's got, 
Smucky, have you had a revelation lately, or, or this is this? Like, Pell, you have an announcement to make or anything? Oh, I right, must right. Now, say, Schmucky, Schmucky Putznick, you're what, eighty-seven? Eighty-eight now. 88. Eighty-eight. He's been voting Democrat. I mean, you don't, for, you don't, need, you didn't know there was for another seventy party. years <laughs> since I was eighteen. I've been voting Democrat. He didn't know there was another party. What's what's going on now with you? You just heard from Joe. Cox. Yes, I heard. I did a lot of reading and I did a lot of self introspection over the weekend. I have an earth-shattering announcement to make. Here on our show? Here yeah. on your show. Oh, let me make sure. For the first time in my 88-year life, I'm going to pull the lever for a Republican. Oh, oh my, my God. Word. I can't take what these Democrats are doing oh, anymore. You heard it first here, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Schmucky Putznick. Putznick. 70 years voting Democrat. Didn't know there was a Republican Party. Is this year going to vote Republican? On November I'm 4th? going to the polls to vote for Joe Kaufman. Oh, my <laughs> word. I can't take this little Debbie anymore. <laughs> oh, my word. All right. Well, will you come back and, and tell us more about well, your, well, I, your, I don't believe he's actually going to do your it. Your earth-shattering decision. I, I think he's just we saying. we do have to get to some of the material for today that we worked on. I think he's just saying it, Tom. He's not going to pull the lever. He's not going to pull the lever. No, he ain't. Why gonna. would I say it if I'm not? <laughs> I'm risking my own life in King's Point by saying this. That's true. That's true. Uh, at uh, 48 minutes after, let me, let me tell you something about our show, folks. <laughs> Uh, we put a lot of time in the preparation. We have all kinds of material here, and we do pre-production, and we work everything out to the second. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't quite work that way. Doesn't quite work. Again, 15 um, pounds of camel poop in a five-pound bag. And these guys go, well, how are you going to keep on? I said, I can keep on I can track. I keep on track, yeah. Um, except I have two... People that want to talk and share oh, everything blame this all on the us. time. He's going to blame this on us. And, uh, he's going to blame this on us, Damon. But they, they he's add, the boss. They add the, uh, <laughs> you've got to appeal to the lower information voter. So <laughs> we have that here on our show. Uh, so I, we, 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 I have to balance this all with right. my magical balance. I think that was a cut, Damon. My I'm pretty sure it was. I think that was a cut. My magical balance. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> okay. So what we do on our show here... And we need your help. Either come on on as an advertiser, and then you can <laughs> you can harden your business with, <laughs> with we'll, we'll we'll turn you on to security guards to protect your business if you become an advertiser for us. Speaking of which, aren't we going on a tour? Um, what tour? <clears throat> what tour? The one in March? Oh, <laughs> that tour. Yes, we're going uh, March twenty first to Israel. We talk about uh, national security issues. And uh, particularly with the rise of the Islamic State, the advent, uh, the advent of the Islamic State, Middle East is a precarious piece of property that requires a pernicious, oh, I'm alliterating this thing, a pernicious and peculiar solution in a plenary way. What the heck does that What the that hell mean? did you just say? You know, it means you got to sign up to come on our uh, unique fact-finding mission to Israel Departing on the 21st of March and uh, returning on the 31st of March. It's uh, 10 days, 10 full days, first class hotels. We're going to the various um, areas of world attention, the hot spots. We're going to study the Gaza war in the Gaza area, it's to wrote. We're going up to the uh, Lebanese uh, border areas to deal with the IDF up there and see the threat of Hezbollah. We're going over to, uh, to the east, to the Golan, to the Syria war front, all safe, all protected, all in a, in a, in a very uh, safe way, but an educational way. We're going into Jerusalem to see the uh, complexities of a divided city, with the east side being Islamic and um, them wanting to control the whole thing. So when you come back from this trip with Frank Gaffney, myself, uh, Ambassador Uram Ettinger, and Ronnie Wexler, the owner of the company, he's participating in this particular fact-finding mission, and then a whole bunch of others in, uh, in Israel, you will have received in 10 days a, uh, an associate's degree in Middle Eastern geopolitics and national security. You will know for 3,000 bucks, 29-something, more than 90% of the Americans do 
regarding the necessity of Israel as our national security partner for the protection of you and your family here in the United States. The Islamic State and its Al-Qaeda affiliates, its Sunni Muslim Brotherhood entities, its care front group Hamas proponents. No, no boundaries. They are boundaryless. They see land as Islamic. And if you want to fight for American dirt, <coughs> you need to understand the stuff that's taking place. Contact and, us for more information. And it's going to be absolutely no fun whatsoever. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to be deadly serious the yeah, whole right. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we party hardy on this tour, let me tell you. No, we have a good time. We have uh, about, I think we had 30 or 40 people on the last, the last one right. last year. <clears throat> this one, I think we got 20 already. We're going to go up to 50, I believe. Yeah, I think we're going to do a cutoff and, on that. Um, I Actually, think about that. 15 are returning from, from last And also, night. don't forget, it's not just the activities during the day. Every single night back at the hotel, you're going to have a top-notch speaker um, not lecturing at you, but no, speaking with you. And so you are literally going to learn something every minute you're awake. It's, it's a life-changing experience. It and really, it's just really fun. Is. It's a lot and of then, fun. You know, for the for the for those interested in the historic sites, whether you're a, you're a Christian or Jewish, um, we share a bond of the history. Uh, <clears throat> we will go to the classic sites, uh, to the old city, <coughs> to the Galilee, all of that. So, um, you know, we don't we don't exclude those things. We include them, but we interpret them from a uh, geopolitical national security perspective. Nobody does this on any tours, no. fact finding missions, but we do. All right. All right, let's get into, and what, what I said, because we um, have all the time in the world here, we will, uh, we're going we're gonna to continue with our show. We'll have two or three very key guests each week that bring you significant information, and then our commentary. But we're going to continue with our investigative study into the Muslim Brotherhood entities in the U.S., in particular CARE, in particular their position as a special operations division of the designated terrorist group, the Hamas. Very important, because Hamas is rebuilding right now. We know they're going to reattack when they want to, and we know CARE is going to run front cover for them here in the U.S. And we're laying the groundwork to disrupt, disable, destroy those special operations by CARE. We're telling CARE what we're doing. We're equipping Americans to do it, and we'll do it every one of our shows. We'll give you a little nugget of information. Right now, we want you to understand you got to follow the money. Every one of these major Muslim Brotherhood Hamas leaders are just poverty-stricken. They're out in the streets begging for money. They don't wear nice suits. This is not they, true. They don't fly on private planes. <laughs> don't insult us. What's the real situation? Very, very wealthy. All right. One of the reasons why these leaders that the UN now is bowing over to help rebuild Gaza uh, are so wealthy is because you got to follow the money. There's huge amounts of money to be made in Islamic Jihad, particularly against Israel. If you want to make money, start a business that says, we're going to start a jihad against Israel. We're going to get our ass kicked by Israel. Then the whole world has to give us more money and we'll go do it again. But some of that money skimmed off the top. And some of the skimmers of that money, redirecting of that money and other money, is none other than the subject of our, uh, our study, CARE. We want to show you a little video right now that uh, we have a subject matter expert that we are going to bring in okay. um, in a day or two to uh, give you a little fuller uh, view of how to follow the trail of the money. Then we're going to look at one or two of these guys. Take a look, just short, let's just show them about a minute of our subject matter expert. What's his name? David Yerushalmi. David Yerushalmi. Yerushalmi. Good friend of He's not of care. Italian. Cut it out. Yerushalmi. Good friend of care. And, um, sarcastic. <clears throat> and uh, we had him on uh, about a year ago um, following the money trail. Listen to what David said regarding care and their financial structure. Bottom line. CARE has created several organizations, one of which is a 501c3. And as a 501c3, meaning an IRS-recognized charitable organization that's only allowed a very limited amount of opportunity to do any lobbying and must report all donors who give more than $5,000 to them in any annual period. They must report that 
to the IRS. What we uncovered were That's tax records and other corporate documents that suggested that CARE was operating through several entities to hide the fact that they were receiving millions of dollars from overseas. How did the Council on American Islamic Relations? Yeah, how is the question? And you'll show how do they do will, that? Yeah. You'll, he'll answer that uh, in the days ahead. Um, we will we will bring him back on tape. We taped him, and we may we may even bring him in live. You know, we'll yeah. we'll see where all of this is going. Please do not do that. Uh, yeah, um, and we'll tell you his background with uh, with care. He's got a pretty uh, insightful background. But the point is that here in the United States, CARE is putting these various uh, entities together to move money around. And when you hear the full story as to how they do it, these folks are brilliant how they can get uh, what you would think would be C4, C3 money that needs to be reported in a way that becomes C4 money or, or not a, a for-profit money to be used as they see fit from, I don't know, from whom? From terrorist states? <laughs> from Saudi Arabia, right. from Qatar. Qatar, from the UAE. Um, and we're going to reveal all of this as, uh, as yeah, the show goes the, on. The main amount of money does come from overseas to flood it through there back to Hamas. Yep. A any yep. other organization acting in the same manner, the DOJ would have been so far up their butts by oh, now. Yeah. The fact that David came out with this article, and this was a four-page uh, four story in the Daily Caller, guaranteed the DOJ has not lifted a phone to no. check into this money laundering operation. No, this is the Department of Islam, basically, DOI. Right. Um, uh, let's show the, the, the one graphic where Nihad is surrounded by, uh, I know nothing by those <laughs> folks right there. All right, this is sort of a, a, a signature graphic that you see right now for the folks driving in the car. We have a picture of the subject of our investigative report, Nihad Awad, surrounded by six of his friends, all of whom were at this secret meeting, uh, October 1, 2, 3, 1993, October 1993, one month after the Oslo Accords were, were signed. In, uh, in Oslo, Norway, and the handshake took place on the lawn uh, between Yitzhak Rabin and Yasser Arafat with Bill Clinton. And finally, there was the prospect of peace in the Middle East. The Yasser Arafat agreed to recognize the state of Israel. No, 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 says the Hamas. No, says Nihad Awad. No, says Galashi. No, says all of these people. They immediately organized, and we know all of this, and we have the record because the FBI was watching and, and uh, taping them. They organized this secret meeting. And uh, Mark, put up the, the graphic that shows the 27 people that were at this. And let's just draw in the last minute here the attention to the commonality of the PCs, not the politically correct folks, right? but the, what does the PC stand for on this graphic here? Palestine Thank Committee. Oh, you're about the Palestine, the big grant. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. Want. The, okay, um, okay, okay. The, uh, here's the list of 27 people who were at the secretive meeting October 1993. Right. And uh, for those of you watching, on the left side, you can see the, um, the designation. This is, see the little red emblem on the bottom? This is an exhibit submitted by the Department of Justice right. in the case against the Holy Land trial financers. What's that PC mean there? Palestine the committee. committee. And what is that all about, Mark? The Palestine Committee is the overseeing body of the Central Committee. The Central Committee <clears throat> is made up of three organizations, which are the Holy Land Foundation, the Islamic Association for Palestine, and, and another couple other organizations. But go ahead. So basically... Uh, how many of the 27 are with the Palestinian Committee? And here, here's a, a... I think 17. It looks 17. Like 30, yeah, some here's right a there. fact we want you to, to count them up. consider tonight as we do this investigative report. Now, what are we doing? We're laying out evidence that the federal government laid out to conclude that CARE functions as the Special Operations Division of the Hamas today. Mm -hmm. And all of that means 17 of the 27 members were simply Hamas members, Hamas representatives, 
1993, before Hamas was considered by the U.S. as a, a specially designated terrorist organization. That's very important to understand. So this was a Hamas meeting to such a, a, an extent that the members at, at this meeting, found out by federal wiretap, decided not to use the word Hamas, but to use another word. Tune in tomorrow when we tell you the secret word that was used in this meeting, and then we'll reveal some of the people that were there and what they're doing and how it impacts your life today. Right now, we got to go. It's the end of our show. We'll see you tomorrow. Tom Tretto signing off October 20th, 2014, WSBR 740. We'll see you now.